السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع هداهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Here we come to the end of a wonderful program For three days we have been remembering the Messenger of Allah, the light of Allah on earth sent with the guidance of Allah to mankind for the rest of time. And with the death of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prophethood has ended. And there is a lot for us to learn from the life of the Messenger Alaihi Salatu Wasallam as well as from the ending of prophethood. If we are to look quickly at the life of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, we find the man of excellent character turning toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on a day in Ramadan is entrusted with prophethood. On that day, he understands the implication of the message and he tells his wife the time for rest has ended. There will be no rest after today. He now understands that there is a higher purpose for him. Thirteen years later, he migrated from Mecca to Medina to establish the first state in the city-state of Medina, giving root not simply to the Muslim deen, but to Muslim society. A year later in the month of Ramadan, the most important battle in the history of humanity happened, the Battle of Badr. Even though it's a relatively small battle involving 1,300 people total from both sides, it is most important because the history of Iman on earth until that day is that Allah would send a messenger and people would either attack the messenger or the message of the messenger until they, not the message, prevails and Allah sends another messenger. When I say they prevail, I mean it completely from a worldly sense that the message would be distorted. Not in any way in a spiritual sense for the word of Allah always prevails. Until that day when the Muslims established a defense for the deen never to be broken again. There will always be people who will stand up for la ilaha illallah from that day on. About six years afterwards, six to seven years afterwards in Ramadan, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam peacefully conquers Mecca and Islam spreads throughout Arabia. And in the last year of his life, the Messenger Alaihi Salatu Wasallam engages in the one hajj of his life, Hajjatul Wada'a, the farewell hajj, in which he gives the famous farewell sermon. In that sermon, the Messenger والسلام, summarized to a majority new Muslims, group of new Muslims who have become Muslim in the last couple of years, some of the essentials of the deen, saying, and I will summarize, I will not say in detail, after thanking Allah and praising Him, O oh people, hear me well, for I may not stand before you in this place of mine after this year. And indeed, it was the last year of his life. O oh people, your life and your property are invi inviolable. You may not violate it for one another. Just as this month of yours in this land of yours on this day of yours are sacred. And so let whoever be, who is entrusted with a matter be true to the trust. Have I conveyed the message? O oh Allah, be witness. All the loan interest of Jahiliyyah has been put aside. But you may keep your capital. And the first riba that he has set aside is the riba of his uncle. Starting with his own family. 
so that his uncle may not recover more than the capital. And all the blood vengeance of the age of ignorance is also set aside. And he began with the grandson of another uncle. So the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, begins with his own family setting the example. O oh, people, the devil has given up being worshipped in this land, but he has not given up on lesser matters. So be mindful of shaitan in matters you consider to be small. And from there shaitan comes to us, from matters we think are no big deal. O oh, people, women have rights over you and you have rights over them. And the messenger in that portion advised men to be aware of women and to take care of them three times in three sentences. Saying among what he says, they are like captives in your hand who cannot defend themselves, means cannot defend themselves from you. So be mindful of Allah in treating them. Not because Allah had made you physically stronger that you have to abuse. And then he says, O oh people, you are but brethren, brothers of one another. The property of one of you is not halal for another except with their full willing consent. O oh people, do not go back after me as you were unbelievers striking the necks of one another, killing one another. And I wish more of the world and not just Muslims would take heed from the guidance of Allah where killing seems to become easier by the passage of time. Allah has made life sacred that the throne of Ar-Rahman will shake for the life of a mu'min. We too must hold sacred what Allah has held sacred. Your Lord is one and your Father is one. You all belong to Adam and Adam is from dust. Meaning we are all equal, but also meaning we are all cousins. Maybe not first cousins, but second, third or fourth cousins. We all share the same grandfather, who if he were to look at us today, would shake his head in sorrow for how men look down on other men, how people look down on other people, thinking they are better when in reality they are part of the same family. Indeed, the noblest among you, in the sight of Allah, I never decline clapping for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's his words. Allahu Akbar. The noblest among you in the sight of Allah is whoever is most pious or most God conscious. There is no merit to an Arab over a non Arab except through piety. Have I conveyed the message? Oh Allah, be witness. So people have said, Oh Messenger of Allah, yes, you have conveyed. So the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said, let whoever hears the message convey it to those who are not present. And Muslims have conveyed it generation after generation until here we are today conveying that message of human right and of human dignity. For that we stand and that is our deen. Soon afterwards, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned from Hajj and he became sick at the end of the month of Safar. He had a painful headache. On one day it was so painful he could not stand up. Al-Fadl, the son of Al-Abbas and Ali, son of Abu Talib had to carry him or hold him up so that he is taken to the house of Aisha to be taken care of medically. And then his fever started. On one day he asked Al-Fadl to help him up and he went into the masjid. And he said, O oh people of Allah and there is no God but He. If I have flogged one of you, here is my back. Take your right from me. And if I have insulted one of you, here is my honor, take your right from me. 
It is not my way to hold a grudge. And dearest among you is the one who takes his right from me or forgives that right. So that I can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clear chested. I see that I will need to repeat the message. In other words, nobody moved. He prayed, he came back up, and he repeated that same message. And then one man stood up and he said, O Messenger of Allah, you owe me three silver coins. So he told Al Fadl, pay him. And another man stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, I took three gold coins that don't belong to me. He said, O Al Fadl, take them from him. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever fears from his heart, let him stand up so I make dua for him. So a man stood up and he said, O Messenger of Allah, I am a liar and a hypocrite and I have not left the sin that I have not committed. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, you have dishonored yourself. The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam told him, O oh, Umar, leave him. For him to shame himself his dunya is better for him than to shame himself in the hereafter. And he made dua for him. O oh, Allah, grant him truthfulness. O oh, Allah, grant him iman and show him the path to all that is good. And then he went back into his home. Later he came out and he spoke to people and he said, a slave was given a choice between the joys of this world and what Allah has reserved for him. And he has chosen what Allah has reserved. And at that moment, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq wept because he understood what that meant, that the life of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was coming to an end. The Messenger والسلام, then got, got sicker and he could no longer move or get out. He ordered for Abu Bakr as Siddiq to lead people in salah, perhaps as a hint. But the Messenger clearly avoided naming somebody as his successor. And there is value in that. Fatima radiallahu anha came to the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, saw him suffering. And by that time he was passing out and coming back to. And she said, oh what suffering you are, has befallen you my father, what karb has befallen you my father. So her father, as if to bookend his life, on the first day of da'wah he told his, his wife, the mother of Fatima, there will be no rest after today. He replied to Fatima on this day, your father will not suffer after today. Because this life is a life where we toil and suffer toward Allah. Ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadahan famulaqi. So those who suffer toward Allah in the way of Allah win. And the others suffer in this world still. But they lose the chance to make it worthwhile. And finally, the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, got so sick, he could hardly talk. On the last day of his life, he got a little bit better. He asked to be held up to look at the Muslims at the time that they were lining up for salah. And the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, looked at Muslims lining up for salah and he smiled. For indeed, this scene symbolizes the achievement of the life of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Aus and Khazraj, who had been killing each other for decades, praying with one another toward Allah. People who had been burying their daughters alive, praying toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tri powerful tribes conquering and oppressing and stealing from weak tribes, praying with one another, equal before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
no distinction of race or origin. Among them there's Salman the Persian, among them there's Bilal ibn Rabah who is from Abyssinia, among them there's Suhaib who is Roman, and among them many Arabs from many different tribes. That was the achievement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it is fitting for it to be one of the last things that he sees. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. During that day, he kept on repeating, As-Salah, As-Salah, wa ma malakat aymanukum. Prayer, prayer, and that which your right hand possesses. In other words, treat your servants and your slaves well. Prayer, prayer. Let us not abandon what holds us strong. He was leaning on the, on the uh, lap of Aisha radiallahu anha who said, I felt him get heavier and I felt his lips move as he was saying, Bal al-Rafiq al-A'la, I choose the higher companion and he passed away. It is a true calamity for the Muslim Ummah then and now that the Messenger passed away. But that is the wisdom of Allah. For on that day, the Messenger of Allah died, but humanity graduated. For all time, Allah had to send a Messenger and had to assign to people who will lead them from that day on. Humanity will preserve the deen, you and I preserve the deen, and we choose our own leadership. We are entrusted with the deen of Allah for the rest of time, which could not have happened before. So that moment is an important moment. Allah is clear. Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the final prophet. And the hadith of the messenger is clear. I am the final prophet. There will be no prophet after me. There will be no messenger after me. There will come after me 30 people also claiming to be prophets or messengers. They will all be impost impostors. But what does it mean to us? While the messenger has died, his message has not died, and his da'wah continues, and you and I are the messengers of the messenger of Allah to carry it as he carried it, in his behavior as well as his words, in his actions and in his inactions. And now is my turn and yours to carry that message with which we have been entrusted. That is significant, that is meaningful, and this is a message that the world needs. A message of equality, a message of rights, a message of respect, a message of human dignity. Significant also is the fact that in the example of the Messenger والسلام, we know with his behavior what is right and wrong. We find people in Syria, ISIS, deluding young men into wanton murder by misuse and abuse of ayah and hadith. You can easily twist the ayah and the hadith, but ask yourself, how did the messenger behave? And it will become obvious that bombing villages is completely unacceptable. And as the messenger himself described it, a quality of kufr. It is a quality of kufr to hold the life that Allah held sacred to be cheap. And here today, be it Ferguson or Baltimore, we learned something important. When we abandon standing up for our deen, that vacuum will be filled with others. And those others may not have the same message and true human problems with which Allah has given us the tools to address will remain unaddressed. And we find itself in our sorry situation when one in 10 African-American young men between the age of 25 and 40 is in jail at any given time. It is horrendous, it is horrific, it is inhuman, but it is where we live. 
And it is your job and mine not to simply talk, call Allah and call Rasul, but to live, call Allah and call Rasul, and to take this message to a people who will truly benefit from it, who will often understand it better than we do, and will carry it better than we do, if only we take it to them. And I leave you with this, my brothers and my sisters. This is the trust. I want you to ask yourself, will I carry the trust or will I let the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam down? And bi'ithnillah, there is no doubt. If you bother to come here, bi'ithnillah, the only answer is, you will be true to the trust, you will carry the message. Let you and I and the Muslims help write the next chapter in American history. Jazakumullahu khairan wa barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.